And one person I talked to even got, went as far as to say, well, it's just a relationship with God, and it's like, it doesn't matter what your religion is, as long as you have that good relationship. So it's kind of, and, and look, this is, this is a belief that's, that's common, that it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim or a Hindu or whatever, whatever your religion, as long as you have that relationship. Because, because we all know there's only one God anyway, so if you would tend to worship Him this way, and they worship Him that way, and no one really knows, and you just... You know, and, and you're doing, you're trying your best. God knows your heart. You can see that you're sincere and you're trying to follow Him in whatever way you can, then that's good enough. And this is actually a very Hindu thought. That belief system, I spent some time on an airplane once sitting next to a man as a Hindu, and, and, I, and I tried to give him the gospel, and he, he spent quite a bit of time trying to say how no one really knows that much about God, so people are, are kind of doing what... They think they can, but it's, it's all, we're all still worshiping the same, you know, creator and stuff, which is actually a really wicked religion because the religions are so different. Right. At least when you have the truth versus everything else, they're very different. Amen. The way that you're saved is very different. It's not based on you. It's not based on how well you can obey and listen and everything else. That's not it at all. So um, they'll say, you know, this, this relationship and a lot of people will use that, well, I have a relationship with God. And that's kind of vague anyways, because it's like, well, what do you mean? I mean, what if you have a bad relationship? What happens if you do this or this? You know, and, and there's never really a good defining point for a lot of people. And I like to point out to people that there's only one relationship that really matters, and that's the, the relationship of having a father-son relationship. Because normally when people say, well, it's your relationship, they're talking about how well you get along with somebody, right? So if you have a relationship with a brother Peter and I have a relationship. So like when we're agreeable and, and can talk to each other and hang out and have fun, then we have a good relationship. But if one of us does something the other one doesn't like and we're fighting, then we have a bad relationship. And people will use that type of thing like, well, if you've got a bad relationship with God, then maybe you're in trouble. But if you have a good relationship with him, then you're doing all right. But that is not the relationship we need to be worried about when it comes to our salvation. Because the relationship that you need to be saved is being born into God's family, being born again. Having that spiritual birth, being a member of God's family by virtue of your second birth, and, and having that father-son relationship. And, and, that's, you know, and that's a good tool actually to use with people to help them understand the gospel is that once you're born into a family, you can never be unborn. So whether or not your father is happy with you or angry with you or, or any emotion with you, you're still a son. And that's the good news, and that encapsulates really nicely the gospel that, hey, you, didn't have to, you don't have to do anything. You have to earn your way into the family. You don't have to. You're not like a, a bond servant that has to buy your freedom because you can't pay enough. But there is someone that came and made the payment in full Amen. to free you and to gain, grant you access into that family. Of course, Jesus Christ, who paid for all of our sins. Um, that's the relationship. But I, this isn't a gospel sermon, so I'm going to continue on here because that's the, you know, people will try to focus on the relationship. And honestly, I don't spend a lot of time with that. Usually I bring up the father-son relationship thing later on in my gospel presentation to, to drive that home, especially when people bring that up uh, from the beginning, because when, when you speak with people, when you, when you talk to people, obviously the goal is to reach them, right? We don't preach at people. We don't talk at people. We don't run down a, a list of just like a script, right? Like a sales script or something. We're communicating with people. We're trying to help people to, uh, one, understand the gospel, and two, persuade them to believe the gospel. So when you can pick up on areas that someone, under, their understanding of God, of salvation, in the words that they're using, and you could, you could pick up on areas where they're, where they're off, where it's flawed, where they don't have the right... Uh, understanding and it's clear through what they're explaining, what they're describing, it's really good to be able to use and correct the terms that they use in their view because that is something that the, that, that's going to make more sense to them. 
right? So if people are coming at you using this concept of having a relationship, and that's the first thing that's going to come out of their mouth as to why they think they're going to heaven. Well, I've got a good relationship with God. They're thinking, I pray every day. I go to church. You know, I, I try to do good. I'm doing all this stuff. That's my relationship. That's where their mind is at. That's where their trust is at. And then you could come along and explain, no, no, no. You, you know, relationship's important, but this is the relationship that you need to focus on getting down right now. This is the relationship that matters because that can click with them maybe even better than some other things, and they need to change their mind on what they're trusting in. So it's good to be able to pick up on the concepts that they use to explain what they're trusting in to be saved and how they feel they can know God. And you're not going to be able to know God without having that father-son relationship. 